This is the pre-lab video for the experiment Stereochemistry of Bromine Addition to Transcinamic Acid. In this presentation I will cover the pre-lab assignment, safety information, the goals of the experiment and the methods that will be used to achieve them, background information about the reaction, some information about how to conduct the experiment, how to clean up at the end of the experiment, and some pointers on completing the analysis. Prior to lab, you will need to review the sections on assembling a reaction apparatus, how to carry out a recrystallization, and measuring melting points and melting ranges in techniques in organic chemistry. And you'll need to prepare your notebook using the preparative format. The important safety information in this experiment is in regard to molecular bromine and acetic acid. Bromine is highly toxic and corrosive, and its vapors can damage the eyes and respiratory tract. Accordingly, you'll need to wear gloves and dispense it in a fume hood. You also need to avoid contact and avoiding, avoid inhaling its vapors. Acetic acid is corrosive and highly irritating to the eyes and respiratory tract and should be handled accordingly. The goals of this experiment are to carry out the bromination of transcinamic acid to isolate and purify the product and determine the product's stereochemistry. To do this, you'll carry out the bromination using an apparatus equipped for addition of bromine under reflux. You will need to precipitate the product from water. You'll isolate it by vacuum filtration. You'll then purify it by recrystallization. And finally, by measuring its melting point, you can determine if the product is the erythro or the threoisomer or a mixture of the two. Alkene bromination is a very general organic reaction, and study of this reaction has provided detailed insight into its mechanism. One of the principal points at issue is if there is a positively charged intermediate, is it a bridged bromonium ion, a carbocation, or an equilibrium mixture of the two? If addition results in a bromonium ion, Anti-stereochemistry can readily be explained. Nucleophilic ring opening by bromide ion would occur by backside attack at carbon with rupture of one of the carbon-bromine bonds, giving overall anti-addition. On the other hand, a freely rotating open carbocation would be expected to give both syn and anti-addition. If the principal intermediate were an ion pair that collapsed faster than rotation around the carbon-carbon bond, syn addition would occur. Stereochemical studies have provided much of the data pertaining to this and can be generalized as follows. Anti-addition is preferred for alkenes that do not have substituent groups that would strongly stabilize a carbocation intermediate. For example, Z and E2-butene give products that are exclusively from anti-addition. In contrast, when the alkene is conjugated with an aryl group, such as we see here in Z1-phenylpropene, the extent of syn addition becomes greater. This can be explained by addition producing an equilibrium mixture of bromonium ion and an open carbocation that is stabilized by resonance with the adjacent aryl substituent. In conducting this experiment, it's imperative that you handle the bromine with great care. When you assemble the reaction apparatus, you need to ensure that all the joints are properly connected so that no vapors will escape. After the reaction is complete and residual bromine is discharged by adding a small amount of cyclohexene, the risk of exposure to bromine is eliminated. However, the acetic acid solvent remains. It has a pungent, vinegar-like, irritating odor and you'll need to take care when transferring the reaction mixture to an Erlenmeyer flask and when con conducting the first filtration. When you add the reaction mixture to water, the crude product will immediately precipitate out. To ensure complete precipitation, you cool the mixture for 15 minutes in an ice bath and then collect the product by vacuum filtration. The goal of this stage of the purification is to wash the residual acetic acid out of the product. This is best accomplished by leaving the aspirator running on your vacuum filtration apparatus and pressing the product into a uniform layer in the bottom of the Buchner funnel. You can do this easily with the back of a spatula. 
You then pour small portions of cold water over the cake of crude product. If cracks form in the cake, smooth them out with your spatula and continue washing. The process is complete when you can smell little or no acetic acid on the product. At that point, you'll want to continue to run the aspirator for an additional five minutes to get the crude product dry enough for recrystallization. Final purification is accomplished by recrystallizing from 50% aqueous ethanol. This needs to be done using the process you learned in the recrystallization experiment. You'll need two Erlenmeyer flasks. You will place the crude product in one and some 50% aqueous ethanol in the other. After heating the solvent to just below boiling, you add small portions of it to the solid, allowing it to boil briefly between additions until the solid dissolves. At that point, you remove the Erlenmeyer from the heat, cover it, allow it to stand on the bench top until crystals form and it reaches room temperature. It's then transferred to an ice water bath for 10 to 15 minutes before recovering the crystals by vacuum filtration. Once you have dry, purified crystals, you can measure their melting range. It's absolutely essential you do this carefully and slowly to get good data. And you should consider repeating the measurement to ensure that it's accurate. When you clean up at the end of the experiment, the filtrates can be washed down the drain, the product should be placed in the appropriate waste container, and you should wash all of your glassware. Finally, a couple pointers on the analysis. Since the key to this experiment is understanding stereo the stereochemical outcome of the reaction, you need to draw clear, accurate perspective drawings in the mechanisms that show all of the appropriate stereochemistry. And finally, you will encounter a common type of question for a preparative experiment in which you're asked to describe the possible effects on the results of certain errors in execution or variations in the procedure. When you answer this question, you need to be specific about what would be observed. For example, would the variation increase or decrease the yield? Would it result in an impure product? If so, what would the impurity be? Would the melting point be affected? And if so, what would you expect to observe for that melting point? And so on. 